The Wagner Group is going to be subsumed and integrated with the Russian Defense Ministry to a greater extent than ever before, and its operations in Africa are likely to be nationalized and likely to remain off the front lines in Ukraine as long as Russia is fighting primarily a defensive operation there. Russian authorities say that they're conducting molecular genetic tests on the 10 bodies retrieved from the plane crash near Moscow. Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin is assumed uh, to be uh, among the dead. The flight recorders have also been recovered, according to report. Let's get some thoughts on these developments from Samuel Romani, associate fellow at the think tank Rusi and author of Putin's War on Ukraine. Um, Samuel, thank you so much for giving us your time. I really appreciate it. Um, what is the latest we know about the plane crash that is presumed to have killed Yevgeny Prigozhin, of course, the leader of the Wagner Group? Well, what we know now is obviously there is the process of identifying the bodies has been excluded DNA. That's one thing that's happening. The other thing that we've also confirmed coming from the uh, aircraft CEO was that that second plane that uh, was supposed to have landed that was owned by Prigozhin actually has no affiliation or connection to the water group whatsoever. So I think that uh, these uh, signs, as well as the outpouring of grief and calls for revenge amongst Wagner Group associates, these suggest that Prigozhin is in fact dead. Can we trust the news that's coming out of the Russian authorities? We hear there's going to be molecular tests. I mean, it's, it's been well documented, but that a lot of the uh, Russian media is... Uh, if in no way directly controlled by the Kremlin, but they will think twice before reporting something that the Kremlin um, might take a, a disagreement with. How much can we trust the information that's coming out about the crash at uh, the crash site and about the identification of those bodies? I think, yeah, we should take an attitude of not trust and verify, but mistrust and verify when it comes to dealing with the uh, Russian state media. And I think that... Uh, is the only uh, information space that seems to be somewhat independent or it seems to be somewhat uh, accurate in the information that it pushes out is Telegram. Uh, even on Telegram, you can find out some of the setbacks that the Russian forces have on the front lines. I think it's pretty telling that Prigozhin has died, given the reactions of uh, the Water Group Telegram channels, some of them calling the perpetrators to be traitors, calling for even a second march for justice. I mean, that anger that we're seeing over there, I think, is indicative of something big happened. But Samuel, didn't uh, Evgeny Prigozhin also die in another plane crash in 2019? Yes, he did. Yeah, he, uh, there was a well, wide of reports that he uh, had died in 2019 uh, over the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, and then three days later he showed up again. So uh, you know, obviously he wasn't so much of a public figure then as he is now, because he only admitted he was head of the Wagner Group in September 2022, and he's built his public profile on Telegram since then. So there, were, there weren't the kind of reactions and outpourings that we see then. So it's difficult to make a direct comparison between the two. But yes, he has faked his death before. And it's possible that he may have done it again. But I think it's becoming a less and less likely outcome by the day. And Samuel, where does this leave the Wagner group? Of course, two months ago, uh, just over two months ago, uh, they were being led by Yevgeny Prigozhin towards Moscow in that attempted coup, uh, so to speak. Uh, what happens to his forces now? They, quite a lot of them had moved over to Africa to carry on their work there. Of course, a lot of them were given dispensation or, or refuge, if you like, from the Russian authorities uh, to go to Belarus as well. What happens to that rather... Uh, big and sort of important fighting force. Well, I think that, you know, the Wagner Group obviously needs to find a new leader. And uh, it's, well, the questions are who's going to be able to take on that mantle. I mean, it could be somebody from within the structures, like Mikhail Bazinsev, who uh, yeah, was a former deputy defense minister who led the siege in Mariupol, but he has had a falling out with Shoigu. So he's a difficult person to elevate. It could be somebody from the outside who's an ultranationalist who is trusted by the Kremlin, who has experience in some of the theaters of operation that Prigozhin was in, like Victor Bout, the arms dealer. But in, in any case, the Wagner Group is going to be subsumed and integrated with the Russian Defense Ministry to a greater extent than ever before, and its operations in Africa are likely to be nationalized and likely to remain off the front lines in Ukraine as long as Russia is fighting primarily a defensive operation there. 
Uh, finally, tell me all, where does this leave Vladimir Putin? Uh, has this incident strengthened his position? Has it made Russia more pliable to his command? Is it going to make people around him think twice about crossing him or expressing uh, discomfort in, in the war in Ukraine? What has this incident done for Vladimir Putin? Well, I think that Vladimir Putin was shown to be extraordinarily weak uh, when uh, in two months after uh, the mutiny, Prigozhin was effectively running around like nothing had happened and even meeting with African leaders in the uh, whole Trinity Hotel, and, uh, which he owns, St. Petersburg. And so uh, this was a necessary step, I think, from Putin's point of view, to kind of uh, sh fire a warning shot against ultranational dissent in Russia, against anybody who would be unwilling to follow orders. I think he's now codified that with the Pledge of Allegiance to the Russian flag and a pledge to obey the senior commanders for all fighters in the military, including Wagner. So I think he's going to be cracking down on further violations or attempts like of, this, of another mutiny even more seriously in the future.